there is renewed hope for making 3D printed organs. Previously, a doctor by the name of Pablo Maccarini set the field back at least a decade. He falsified research and experimented on humans using 3D printed plastic tracheas with a rather crude method of just pouring stem cells on them, claiming that they took hold and started growing and put them in people. This was very, very bad. It didn't work. As a result, doing this kind of work became radioactive, but we finally had a major breakthrough. Researchers used spinach leaves. The vascular system of a plant is not that different from ours. There's the fractal nature of the vascular system. They decellularized the leaves and got every single plant cell out of there, leaving only the plant material, the cellulose. They then established cell populations there. First, they used fibronectin and coated the inside of the plant tissue. They then used that scaffolding to support endothelial cells derived from cord blood. Lastly, once they've established an endothelial system that could be capable of pumping blood, they added myocardial stem cells, so cells that are destined to become heart tissue. And it worked. It could beat. The ultimate goal of this research would be to use the same methods for a decellularized heart. This is not all that different than a surgery that I had. I had decellularized cartilage placed in my hip in a bone-sparing surgery for reconstruction. That relied on my own tissues to vascularize it and hoped that it worked. I heard there was about a 50-50 shot it would work. Either way, I might end up having a hip replacement if it didn't or they used a different method. In this case, we are not relying on your body. We can engineer the structures before it ever goes into a patient. It could prevent the need for repeat transplants in the case of rejection, which quite often can result in a loss of life. There has long been the question if we could 3D print an organ from scratch, and I suppose that's possible, but nature had millions of years to evolve our structures. It's a lot easier to just take something that's already been formed and turn it into you. The question of whether or not we could use plant tissues as a scaffolding structure for a fabricated organ isn't entirely out of the question. These could provide scaffolding structures for new cells coming in on cartilaginous structures. Eventually, the body would clear out the cellulose. It's not part of you. It's not going to maintain it, and it's not going to make it. As for the question of telomeres, it is really important to save cord blood for your child's future medical needs, but if you haven't, that's not a big deal. We can take stem cells from your skin and from your bone marrow and induce them to become stem cells. For a long time, there was the question of the telomeres. Telomeres shorten over your lifetime, and when we clone an animal, it ends up having shortened telomeres that's essentially born at the same age as the adult it was taken from. That is no longer an issue. Induced pluripotent stem cells have telomeres that you would expect of a newborn. You may also have the question, could we use that to help solve aging? Maybe. We are not there yet, but I'm excited to find out. Also, I just really want to show you this picture. It's rather haunting, isn't it? The completely decellularized leaf 